There is a podcast about an island in the North Atlantic where people have been looking for an incredible treasure for more than 200 years. Hello, and welcome back to Could It Be? An Oak Island podcast. We are your hosts, Deidre and Dustin White. Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? I'm so happy to be back and chatting about some more Oak Island. Oh, man. Always happy to be chatting about the <sighs> good Oak Island. Yeah. I mean, we've had kind of a crazy couple weeks, and yeah. it's good to go back to some Oak Island normalcy. <laughs> <laughs> as normal as Oak Island can get, right? As, as normal as it can get, yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's crazy stuff happening on the island. You uh, know? We got some crazy new structures that we've never seen before, right? Oh, man. That nobody's ever seen before. More wood. It, okay. Nobody's seen before. I mean, the people that built it have seen it, right? Well. And it looks like it it's, might be kind of modern-ish. Like, I mean, not modern, but, you know, not like depositor. Yeah, it sounds like we should really just dive into Smith's Cove right yeah, away we should. and uh, chat. Well, Smith's Cove was kind of a focus of this episode. It was a pretty big deal because, mm -hmm. well, for so many reasons, <laughs> we, <laughs> uh, we open with it and they're coming in. There's that huge crane. You know, we get the drone shot and there's this giant crane hanging, you know, way above the island. Yeah, what did Gary say about the crane? Oh, there's... What do you say? There's iron. There's in definitely Smith's iron Cove in Smith's now. Cove now. Yeah. Or I was going like to do that in a pirate voice for some <laughs> reason. Gary doesn't really have a pirate voice. Uh, iron. Gary, Gary's kind of a pirate. He's a pirate. He's kind of a pirate. He has uh, the skull and crossbones on his hat, right? That's true. He's kind of a pirate. Mm -hmm. It makes him a Bobby Dazzling pirate. Sure. Maybe. In his brain. In his brain. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, sure. I mean, in my heart. How about that? In your heart. <laughs> He's a Bobby Dazzler pirate in my heart. That, that's what matters. Yeah. So, fun episode. Uh, lots, like we, like you said, lots going on in Smith's Cove. We have some activity at the Money Pit. Mm -hmm. um, they have a field trip, right? Yeah. Oh, so, yes, the field trip. Yeah, lots to get to on this episode. So, okay, you said you talked about the crane pad mm -hmm. or, and the crane. Smith's Cove, what are they doing out there? Well, they're doing the bump out, yo. Things that go bump? Out in the night, yeah. The I feel like this is a perfect setup for us to do like a rap here. <laughs> Things that go bump out. Things go bump out. <laughs> I don't know. Bump, bump, bump it up. Bump, bump, bump it up. Or bump, bump, bump it out. Yeah, they're gonna bump it out. Okay, they, 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 they did, did bump, bump it out. out. <laughs> uh, they bumped it out fifty feet uh, past where the current dam is, and. Mm -hmm past where Dan had had his coffer dam. Yes. Right? Yeah. And Marty, which something I thought was interesting, they did a flash over to Marty in an interview and saying that Smith's Cove was one of the big agenda items for this year to finish it out. Yeah. I'm happy that they That's... spent a lot of resources and a lot of time in Smith's Cove because last year, I mean, we didn't have all of our answers, not by long shot. Yeah, but we were, thought we were going to finish it out last year. I know. Well, all the I'm, aren't you glad that they have taken the time to really do a uh, even a? I don't know. I don't know if it's a better job. I don't know if it's a, if it's a what. But it's a extra fifty foot bump out. It is. It's it's exciting. It's always fun to get new data. It's always fun to get new discoveries. So well, in my thoughts, with we we think we're so far out, but if that's the case and then we find this structure which is very likely to be searcher mm -hmm. structure mm -hmm. then man i think there's gonna be a lot more that has to be done in smith's cove before an x can be put through it i don't know that they could do that all in a season they're not and gonna, take care of the swamp they're not gonna be able to but i mean if they actually end up finding legit finger drains if they end up finding you know flood tunnels whatever mm -hmm. Of course, they're going to come back to it in the next season, right? Well, what do you make of the stacked rocks? It could be the beginnings of the finger drains, right? Mm -hmm. It could be a French drain that is filtering the water to go straight back into that money pit, fill it up, block people from checking it out. So then if we have the place rocks and we're saying those are finger drains, mm -hmm. then the wall that is right next to it that you know 
Billy and Laird have decided it's best to dig along, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. that worked out best last year. Then if that is searcher, and then those are the drains on that side. So sur some searchers have found some drains in the past. Mm -hmm. But but whose work is this? Because if that was underwater mm -hmm. and that far out, who was it? Mark did Marty say that looks like Restall or Dunfield work? Well, Restall, I believe, is what he said. I don't think he said Dunfield. I, I think he said one or the other. Mm -hmm. I mean, we saw a big Dunfield excavation. Yeah. Well, there was. He did a lot of work, a lot of work, and a lot of damage, right? Mm -hmm. But you know, he was. He thought he was going to find it any day. Mm -hmm. But I don't know the the finger drains and i mean okay so let's let's talk about this structure okay and it's the it, the wooden wall there mm -hmm. um it, it, first of all found by mark mike jardine yes. over at uh, irving irving equipment so that does that make it mike's wall mike's structure <sighs> and something else if he could see it at low tide why didn't anybody else see it at low tide before you know it's gotta have to do with because it wasn't the position cleared off. of where the coffer yeah dam I know, but, is is but they while the they pulled out those sheets of the coffer dam mm -hmm. there was no water in there they were able to say hey look there's like a square structure out there like they were able to see it mm -hmm. but they weren't able to get in and close until he pulled up that piece mm -hmm. for them to so he could probably see it like Without... last year, the year before, the year before, because the t the tide always goes out, and well, that is always yeah. I know the exposed. tide's always going to go. That's out. always exposed. I, I I don't know. I I think you're it, it. Okay, let me blah 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 back up here. So the you can only dig so close to the wall mm -hmm. too, and this may have been an instance where based on some new engineering or the bump out now they can see that structure i think maybe it was covered and they kind of like scraped off whatever was on the top layer and that's why they could see it all of a sudden maybe maybe we need to ask i feel like this is a debate <laughs> that is gonna consistently happen in our household and <laughs> we need to watch the episode again so we can pinpoint it on a map it just seems weird like they, there's an obvious structure there. There's obvious pieces of wood sticking out of the mud, and they didn't see it before. Oh, like there's Earl? a lot of obvious pieces of wood <laughs> sticking out of the mud on Oak Island. That's I mean, true. how often are we coming across wood? It's a lot. So anyway, I think it's Mike's wall or Mike's structure. Mike's structure. <laughs> <laughs> Mike's wall or wallish structure. Okay, Mike can have a structure. Yeah, I think it is. Okay, Mike's well, structure. It. Mike structure in Billy's Bay. <laughs> in Billy's Bay. <laughs> Maybe yeah. that's why they're going to put an X through Smith's Cove because they're no longer going to call it that anymore. It'll now be converted to Billy's Bay. It should be, as it should. <laughs> down by the bay. Down by the bay. So, yes, we have a lot of work going on down there. The coffer dam being bumped out. Mm -hmm. uh, I liked it when they bumped it out, then they were going to drain it. Mm -hmm. And Gary's like, what, what did he say? I forgot. He said something like, uh, I don't know, because all the water was going to pour uh, out. What did they say? What is it? Like, open the floodgates? Open the floodgates, I yeah. say that about all kinds of weird, random things. You do. Mm -hmm. That's like, it's some. That's a weird thing to have in your vocabulary as often as it is. Especially you're when just, you hadn't heard it before on, uh, like, from a show like Oak Island at I, that point. I heard it somewhere. You've heard, I mean, you've heard it lots of places, but. I didn't uh, just make it up. I wasn't. <laughs> like I'm not a caveman that's like come back to or cave woman or cave woman or yeah. whatever. You mm -hmm. you you crazy. Yeah, the floodgate opened, all the water rushed out. Pretty cool to see. Mm -hmm. And they were excited to really begin their work in Smith's Cove. And mm -hmm. then we do get to later in the episode where they're scooping it up and you know, scooping uh scoop. <laughs> okay <laughs> you're so weird <laughs> yes and then we get the is that tar paper yeah tar paper mm, i've never really heard of tar paper before this episode have you seriously yeah seriously i'm not in construction okay i am not you are into like housing and stuff i'm liking you know? to housing <laughs> yeah, like that's your profession you're a realtor you yes. know about housing and tar probably paper. how to make things uh okay. waterproof or whatever and using <laughs> tar roofs? paper 
I don't know, but it's not something that's normal okay. in my everyday life. Go Let's ahead. back it up. Go ahead. Back, back, back it up. Let's hear back, it. Back. Okay. So example, if you yeah. have a flat roof, you're okay. going to have, at least you should, if the roof was done properly, you have very minimal slope. And around here, you can't have a roof like that with regular shingles. You're going to have to have tar paper that rolled out. Mm -hmm. It's a very flat asphalt type of it's paper? not a shingle it's paper right <laughs> okay. and it's in order to create a membrane so that water doesn't come through whoa okay okay because Sounds if very you have a technical. shingle it's gonna come up and underneath no it's we're talking about asphalt here <laughs> but tar paper we know that they first started using it back in the gold rush time okay so the so 1840s 50s or, yeah early 1800s oh early 1800s Be, okay. like we're talking about some of the first sure like shacks they were living in and had if a waterproof you, them right yeah it, but this is the very first uh, something that's like it it's like a tar cloth so they would build these little shacks because they're supposed to be temporary structures it was a cheap affordable lightweight way mm -hmm. to cover the roof okay so they would there's no reason, though. It, it looks very different than what we would ex what we see as modern tar paper today. So I'm not saying it's tar paper from that far back. It's not stuff you'd buy at Home Depot. No, the, it doesn't it's look not like. And it's not stuff so ancient that it's uh, the first. Uh, no, you know. Okay. I'm saying that the rest alls could have. Yeah. Used it. It definitely screams searcher, right? Yeah. So why are we are they still thinking that this structure could not be searcher i, I it felt like that was a little bit of the conversation going on hmm. yeah that's what they sounded like but i think they're probably convinced that it's searcher and that the searchers had found this finger drain or this french drain mm -hmm. that you know all these deliberately stacked rocks mm -hmm. that would lead them somewhere and these people that built this would, you know, they were, they probably were excited to find all these stacked rocks and trying to figure mm -hmm. it out. And they were just building a wall to hold back whatever. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's hard to know without being there. Oh, of course. But I think maybe something we can say is it feels like they mutually agree that the stacked rocks could be depositor mm -hmm. and tar paper, wooden structure searcher. Like, this is one of the drains that they found? Could be. Mm. Could it be? Could it? <laughs> I, I'm going yes. Okay. So Sounds good. It just, it seems crazy that it's that far out. Who who was able to get out that far when they didn't, when Rick and Marty are thinking they're the first ones to get out that far? Apparently well, not. Apparently it happened before Dan Blankenship. Yeah. So, a long time ago. And we have records showing how far out um, Dunfield oh, yeah. mm -hmm. went. I mean, Dan was obviously there, too. There's pictures of Dunfield. And... Yeah, we're going to talk more about Dunfield later. Oh, yeah. I got we some need stuff to... to talk about. I got some stuff to talk about Dunfield, too. So that'll be a nice little chat a rooney <laughs> <laughs> chat a rooney sure. chat a rooney Okay. What else, anything else in Smith's Cove you feel like we should address now? Well... The, the bump out itself is about 6,000 square feet mm -hmm. of extra space. That's a lot. I know, because you, your mind goes into this. What What does a 6,000 square foot house look yeah. like? Around here, <laughs> a you know, a good sized, like pretty darn good sized ranch home. You're looking at, two thousand. let's say 2,000 square feet. Like, like a lot? Or, oh, you're talking okay, about. Okay, we, in a two-story house, we're in about 1,800. Yes. Okay, so a little bit bigger mm -hmm. than us. I think you have a single-level home. Yeah, so, but that would, that's both levels. So one level would be about, like, our square foot, or our, like, around our house is probably about 1,000 square feet, right? So it's, like, would be six of those? Or no. more? No, okay. Um. Educate me. So, uh... <laughs> A single level, three bedroom, two bath home, easily 1800. Let's just round that up to a 2000 square foot home. Now, if you've got how, how many square feet do we 6, have? 6,000. Okay. So if you put three of those homes, you know, if we interlock them like Tetris style, mm -hmm. they would fit in there. But that's, 
that's talking about two stories to make no. it that. A ranch home is a single level home. Oh, oh, ranch. Gotcha. I missed that part. Yes. A Over ranch, single okay. level home. Think of mom's house. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so three just, of those interlocking. Yeah. Three, be about three this Tetris case. pieces. Okay. Well, that's a pretty sizable extension. That's a lot. Yeah, I mean, especially when you're digging with when you're dealing with underground digging for uh -huh. treasure or for whatever they're looking for, because uh -huh. then you go it, once you go down, that square footage goes up. Yeah, I mean, Each you, foot, you're getting cubed at yeah, that point. Yeah, you're going square. cube. Yeah, I mean, uh -huh. it's going that's a lot of earth to move. Yeah, on an archaeological to, dig, that's yeah. that's a lot. It's a lot. So I I commend them for their efforts. <laughs> Because that is a lot of work. <laughs> yes. But that, they're willing to do it. They are willing and to do it. And they need answers. And we all need answers. And more, most importantly, we need answers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, everybody has to answer to us. <laughs> sure. No. Nah, hey, everybody would like some answers. No, we're all very, very much invested. So Yeah. So 50 foot bump out, 6,000 square feet, lots of new areas to uh, get dirty in. Mm -hmm. Rick was already up to his elbows in mud. So Laird keep seems it up, buddy. Stoked. Laird does seem excited about this. And you know what? I want to propose something from this um, Smith's Cove scene where Laird and Billy are deciding how to attack it. Mm -hmm. Right. So they decide to go up and down the wall. Yep. And then once we get to the end of whatever said structure is, mm -hmm. like Rick says, we'll go whatever way it turns if it does turn or if it just ends sure but billy and laird's interaction made me think new amazing race team oh man like laird? That, that could be really laird interesting and billy? i mean amazing i don't want to give billy up as my partner on the amazing race i mean he doesn't know this but yeah. he's gonna be <laughs> my <laughs> you're getting kicked to the curb thanks <laughs> And Billy and the excavator coming you know with me. I'm used to it. And that's oh, fine. give me a break. That would be fun. That would be a fun thing I to watch. I think that might be a I dynamic think, duo. I think they should just do a whole Amazing Race season featuring people from Oak Island. They have enough oh, people. Two by two. Let's they must it. come and conquer the world. Gary and Jack versus Laird and Billy. Mm -hmm. And X, Y, and Z. Everybody else. Oh, yeah. Uh, Yes. It would be fun. It would. So that, that was it. I just couldn't let that go. Well, it felt like a I hear good, amazing race team. I hear you. And when we, so I, I don't know. I'm excited to see what comes next with their discoveries in Smith's Cove from mm -hmm. this bump out. I mean, that's just one little sliver that they've dug out. Mm -hmm. I mean, what's five feet over to the left or the right, you know? Who I knows? Know. Who knows what's under there? The shadow knows. Does he? Yeah. I had a dream about the shadow. Last oh, did night. you? Yeah, it was weird. I didn't tell you about it yet. You That's... want to hear about it? Sure. Why not? Yeah, I'll talk to you about it later. Oh, okay. It yeah. Invo it involved time travel. It was weird. Okay. <laughs> Maybe that's the whole the problem with Oak Island. All yeah. the time. Maybe there's like a time traveling. Maybe this is really a real life season of Lost. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to dig down and find a wormhole. Yeah. It, that's like what 10X is. <laughs> yeah. The wormhole. It's a hatch. Okay. It's a hatch. Yeah. We just restarted watching Lost uh, this week. <laughs> we haven't tell. watched it since it was uh, regularly on TV. And yeah, fun. Good. Good second watch. It's a good time. It does. Remind me of some Oak Island happenings. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Okay. Smith's right. Cove. Are we wrapped up in tar paper? <laughs> no. Ready to move on? No. No. Maybe you can be. I'm not. No thanks. Oh, why not? If we're going to wrap it up, let's wrap, wrap, wrap it up. Wrap, bump, wrap. bump, bump it out. Yeah. Okay. It's wrapped up. Okay. It's wrapped up. All right. And headed to the money pit. It's, yep. Or okay. Or wherever else <laughs> you have your notes. The money pit. Yeah. Money pit is next. Okay. And this is where I want to talk about Dunfield. Yes. Okay. So, Take it away, Captain. All right. So, well, first, before we get to Dunfield, we get <laughs> Doug. 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 Doug is like, hey, let's go down to the research center and have a little chat, everybody. Okay. Maybe not everybody. <laughs> it's Rick. He... <laughs> it's Rick, Doug, and uh, Steve. Yep. Guptill, right? Surveyor. So they go down to this uh, to the research center. They're looking at some old photos. Doug's like, hey, right over here is Shaft 9. This mm -hmm. is what we just found. Mm -hmm. And Rick's like, yeah, so. Mm -hmm. they look. I, I see it <laughs> in yeah. your handy dandy map. Yeah, but then he's like, you see this disturbed earth over here in this photo. I think this is Shaft 2. And we know that Shaft 2 is 14 feet from the money pit. Mm -hmm. And we know that Shaft 9 was 100 feet from the money pit. Correct. And we could, if 
we can get these two points, we could triangulate where the money pit is. Yeah, because the goal here is just to find another point so mm -hmm. they could triangulate it. Exactly. Right? And Steve is there. He's like, yes, let's do it. I will mark it. You know, Steve's like a master surveyor, right? So uh, he just goes yeah. out there and, you know, he, just, he gets... Stick. And if there's one person that could get an X marks a spot down to the point zero 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 zero, uh -huh. you know, degree or whatever, it's Steve. And so he'll go Steve do it. Steve of Guptill? Yes, and he will go do it. <laughs> and he did do it because uh, we had Rick saying, so what are you suggesting? You, you want to do some sonic drilling over there? Uh, and No. Uh, did you want to do a sonic program? Program, okay. You know what Doug said? What? I want to throw some sonic at it. <laughs> My first thought is, Pew, we're throwing Sonic the Hedgehog at it. Do, 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 yeah. You know, Sonic, he does really good at drilling through Earth. I know. You, like, run really fast. You press down, and he'll start spinning, and, go, and he'll, he'll just crash through it all. Sonic is who we need. Sonic the Hedgehog. Well, Doug a... has found the tool. The tool is a hedgehog. Yeah, naturally. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> let's go back to reality here. Okay, we've got... Doug saying, uh, you know, he was like, he was almost, almost beating around the bush a little bit. He's like, yeah, that's kind of what I'm yeah, saying. You know, right. like he didn't want to say it out loud. Well, yeah, Cause you know, each hole is like what, like up to $20,000 or whatever. I don't know. A lot of Sonic uh, hedgehog rings. Yeah. Yeah. You got to collect a lot of rings for that one. Throw those down the hole. Ding, yeah. Ding, ding. yeah. And so, but they, they go ahead and say, yeah, let's do it. So they're doing it. Right. Yeah. So they take up the Sonic drill up to the money pit. Uh-huh. They we have Steve Guptill getting his precision based X marks a spot, and he's like, All right, I, yep. this is where we need to go. They set up the drill rig directly over it. Everybody seems very impressed with themselves. Oh, look, we got it like exactly over the thing. Yeah, yeah, it looks great. Yeah, right. Okay, yeah. Oh, so, I think I know where you're going with this. Okay, keep going. So they begin drilling, uh -huh. and I, I think it is a depth of what 33 feet. Yeah. At a depth of 30. Okay. So they pull, start pulling up cores. I think one was like at 15 feet. Mm -hmm. One was uh, 20 some feet. I think it was a 33 foot core. They start getting wood. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking to myself, hmm, didn't Dunfield dig a hundred foot wide, hundred foot deep hole in this spot? So like, no matter what they hit there, it's going to be disturbed. No matter what they hit there, it's just going to be a, a jumble of everything pushed back in. Right. That was my thought. And I mean, if they can dig down 110 feet, 120 feet and get um, a wood core of like, uh, you know, the supposed shaft two, but shaft two wasn't even that deep, was it? I think it was just uh, barely past the night where the 90 foot stone would have been. So shaft two, here's, I got all the information. I watched the section a few times to okay, make sure good. I had the stats. Okay. Let's hear it, please. Shaft two was dug let's see here 14 feet away from the money pit yeah to a depth of 110 feet okay okay at 110 feet they tunnel towards the money pit gotcha okay yep so mm -hmm. they they didn't encounter water or anything until they were two feet from their target so considering they were 14 feet so at 12 feet they they start encountering water. The end of the tunnel then collapses and fills with water. Mm -hmm. And hope nobody was down there when that happened. <laughs> I, and I, it just, I, I'm thinking to myself, of course that's going to happen mm -hmm. because there's water in the money pit. Where'd you think the water was going to go? If you breach it, it's gonna come straight into you. Well, my thought: Do they think it's gonna be dry below that ninety foot mark or something? Like when they hit a hundred and ten feet? I think they were trying to just hit the treasure vault from the side, mm -hmm. and we're hoping that that was something that was protected from the rest mm -hmm. of from that from the initial shaft. Shafts. Yeah, yeah. And but I'm thinking. I mean, that pressure there, unless you're absolutely positive, and they, I guess they had to be positive that you're tumbling straight into, you're still going to get water seeping. But in. what they didn't know, this is something they did not know at the time, if this is correct. Mm -hmm. 90 foot stone. We'll talk more about that later. Oh, too. I want to. Supposedly, the 90 foot stone says 40 feet beneath, 2 million pounds are buried. Mm -hmm. So if they only went. 110 feet deep that mm -hmm. means they're at about 20 feet deeper than the 90 foot stone 
Mm-hmm. They still had another 20 feet to go before they would get whatever the night, the 40 foot, mm-hmm. you know, so they didn't, they didn't have the translation to that. If that's the real translation. So they had no idea that they needed to go another 20 foot down at shaft two, then go over. Yeah. Well, and even then at 110, I, I don't know. It just, it, it was nice to kind of have that information. But my question is, mm-hmm. so Dunfield dug up that area. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And if they're, then the only reason to be able to drill and hit that spot is if Dunfield literally dug from like the money pit and then the other yeah, direction that's true. because he knew shaft two was over there. Okay. That is the only thing that makes sense to me. But I think I figured, you know, I need to do more research on this, obviously, but I figured mm-hmm. Dunville just like picked a spot in the middle of the money pit area and delineated and did the 100 foot, you know, 50 feet on each side, like a 50 foot radius on each side to make mm-hmm. 100 foot wide and then 110, 20 feet deep or whatever it was. I thought that, too. But then I got to thinking about it and he they obviously really explained would that have on the show, so. known where shaft two was. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So to him. He knows they already dug down to 110 feet and tried to tunnel over Mm -hmm. and would have hit water. So to him, going that direction wouldn't have he why why dig towards the shaft? Put your efforts in the other way, Hmm. in theory. But my initial thought was, yeah, he delineated the whole thing. How in the world are they hitting the shaft at 33 feet? And I think it's funny ironic 33 that's mm-hmm. a pretty important mason number it sure is just just throwing it out there guys just wow. throwing it we, we know one guy that would be all over that number he probably is there's all kinds of guys that are all over that number okay but we're talking about one specific dude mm-hmm. named charles sir charles of Barkhouse. yes that guy. yes yeah the guy that's keeping everything a secret keeper of oak island yeah or not or he's he's, he's, actually he's either try, he's either trying to help them really hard or trying to like steer them the wrong way really hard so that they keep the secrets of the Masons and the uh, Knights Templar and all that right. I don't get a feeling that he knows officially what's down there. And Charles, he's I, I is think the one that got a gold shiny thing out of. Is planted. It was you think he <laughs> he, he did it. Think he did he it. Threw it in. No. no, no, no. Charles is legit. Too legit to quit. Yeah, it's it's um almost a bummer that he didn't get to go on that field trip because I think I figure he'd probably be really mm-hmm. good. Maybe he was busy. It's probably busy. It was probably busy. Yeah. So anyway, they're doing at the money pit. You know, they're doing the sonic drill and they find some wood. They're really excited about mm-hmm. it. Maybe, you know, maybe you're right and the Dunfield just dug in a different area. Which I hope that's the case. That sounds. I do too. That must, you know, if because okay. <laughs> if cuz okay right? if cuz okay if cuz okay so we have okay rick and steve and you know they have all of dunfield's like paperwork right yeah and i, I would assume so they i have haven't Dan's seen paperwork. the library they yes. know they're not gonna just go and you know you've restored my faith in in this dr- uh drilling program okay it's okay i had your same feeling going into this mm-hmm. and then i had an aha as we were talking well thank you very much you're welcome because i think you're you must be right <laughs> of course i'm right you must be right i i me <laughs> <laughs> okay so i just i appreciate it a little bit better now of what their attempts are because they wouldn't do it if they're just if they're like oh we're just going to dig on top of uh dunfield spoils it just i think it would be better if they did a little better explanation of that on the show because you know from a perspective of somebody that just watches the show and enjoys the show mm-hmm. and that's all i do with oak island or whoever uh you know just a common viewer um watches it and they're like didn't they dig like a giant hole in that area and fill it all back in isn't that what they've been telling us for a couple okay. of years your job is to have faith and to go in you said you were a good watcher and you i just, am a good watcher you gave what you know, you took what they're giving you. You're picking up what they're putting down. Yeah. Now you're challenging. I'm not. Now, gonna, here's the I'm thing. just like scratching my head. Like I'm they, trying to p- add two and two. You know, they have nothing to prove to you. Yeah, they know. They, they know, know the things. They know. And I'm I'm happy to watch <laughs> them in their efforts. No, I was like, how were they able to just pinpoint that spot, though? Because 
they know roughly right where it should be they but do. it seems like they put one pin in and bloop we found the corner we're bloop. we're we're headed down the side mm -hmm. which is crazy because they could have hit anywhere in the shaft i know what if they hit right in the middle of the shaft and it's just dirt and that and that's why they were going to do a drilling program yeah. right but right now we we hit a bunch of stacked wood come down the core is awesome we're all excited. Everybody's excited. Choice sausage, <laughs> number one. Lots of choice sausage. Yes. And the question that is posed to Rick by Craig and everybody else, now what? And, well. Was Craig a little apprehensive to make the next call himself? I don't know if he was apprehensive or if Rick is just maybe he's point. overseen. Yeah, maybe, that maybe he's running the point for this Thing. for even, that location even though he wasn't there you know he's a busy guy you know mm -hmm. so is craig and so is all these other guys they have a lot of stuff going around all mm -hmm. over the island he could have just been over at smith's cove or something and come in over mm -hmm. to check in or whatever mm -hmm. but at that point er everybody knows he's gonna want to see what's going on yeah and it makes sense to me you keep drilling till you run out of wood <sighs> Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll be great if they run out of wood around a hundred and ten feet, yeah. right? And then that would verify, hey, we are at shaft two, mm -hmm. and we're doing some of the things that are really important, which is confirming these historical accounts. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So if they're going to keep drilling, and then once they hit bottom, more or less, it's the choices which way. Which way do you go? I guess they have North a few more cores west. to decide. Mm -hmm. And the question is, do you chase the horizontal tunnel or do we try to get all four corners of the, ooh, try to get all four corners? I think that's important. That would probably be most important first because if they're going to do the drilling, what would you do with the finger quotes? Program. You know, if they're going to do this program mm -hmm. of where they're just, they're already committed to do a whole bunch of cores. Mm -hmm. I mean, you might as well try to find each of the corners and the shaft that goes, that's supposed to be, you know, perpendicular to the money pit, mm -hmm. like connecting to the money pit. Well, if you, for data reasons, which I think a lot of this season is going to be, is collecting and confirming the historical accounts that we have on paper, mm -hmm. Such as like with Shaft 9, if we looked at uh, Steve Guptill's map that was shown, you could see the four corners of Shaft 9. Mm -hmm. I assume they found that when they were digging. They're probably going to look for the four corners of Shaft 2. It only makes sense. It only makes sense. And we're taking a logical and scientific approach. And one that has a lot of heart in it, too. The Fellowship of the Dig. The Fellowship of the Dig. You see that picture that was it Steve Guptill posted yesterday mm -hmm. on Facebook of him and a bunch of the guys oh, from the Fellowship of the Dig? That just warmed my heart. Yeah. And I want to know where I can get a coat that sweet. Yeah, they were all wearing matching coats. And... Yeah, and they had like Oak Island on the sleeve. Mm -hmm. They look sharp yeah. and they're all like. Yeah, who was in that picture? Doug, I think Terry, mm -hmm. uh, Laird. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, all, all. Tony Sampson was there. Yep. Uh, this is just off of memory, but I mean, they had a. a Good group of guys you know yep. I, uh charles. charles was there yeah so yeah the fellowship of the dig is strong it is it, it was just a heartwarming picture it, it made me happy i smiled you had a big old smile <laughs> 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 yeah so um i mean i guess they're going to probably continue that into the next uh episode doing some <laughs> more yeah i guess they probably will continue they better that. right at this point but you know i'm still bitter about the discovery of rocks by Laird that we haven't had any closure on so what rocks i think i complain about it in every episode <laughs> you're talking about samuel balls cellar Foundation? or whatever yeah. from last season yeah calm down you don't even remember yeah it, if it was important they would let us know i have faith in that see there's my faith again yeah and you were just throwing your faith out the window no no, you did just a little bit ago. I had to bring no. it down to earth. With you, the you had to explain shaft. to me. Now it makes more sense. So thank you. I have to explain things. I got it. Yeah. I'm here to help. Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> All right. Okay. What, what else, else we got? about the money pit? The money pit. Um, let's see here. We already talked about how they located it based off the 1931 images. Mm -hmm. 
33 feet important mason number sure <laughs> and then they need to find the corners yep so i think we move on to the adventures of jack and gary lot six lot six hmm. so lot six is directly next to lot five lot five it might even be near lot seven it could be it could be i bet you right it, in between it might be between seven and five it is You're no right. yeah anyway i was gonna point out that there is a website dedicated to oak island lot five uh-huh and it has a lot of cool stuff on it a lot of cool artifacts have been found there that's one of the only lots of the island that's not under the not uh, owned by the rick and marty yeah. and Craig. Tom, no i was gonna say uh tom nolan oh, yeah uh jurisdiction you know mm -hmm. they're not the ones overseeing those uh lots five and so you know the person that owns that lot is free to do whatever they want i guess and exactly. they, they have an extensive archaeological archaeological dig going on so i'd recommend going to google typing in oak island lot five and just seeing yeah, checking out that said. website because there's a lot of cool artifacts that have been pulled up just it's... in that one sliver mm -hmm. so and now we got some cool artifacts in the sliver just to the <laughs> uh just over yonder just yeah, past just, that clump of trees just to the east <laughs> barely of a uh, lot five so lot six we got some metal detecting going on mm -hmm. and jack is stoked he is he's like when is he I've not stoked when is jack not ever... stoked i don't know when he's not there digging well like when he's asleep <laughs> <laughs> he's probably still Remember stoked was... in his sleep okay he probably has dreams of like the of wash digging. plant uh digging yeah. no wash he... plant so far not yet not that we've seen the season I know you don't like the wash plant though. Who says that? You last season. I, it's fine. It just it just doesn't seem like it's gonna catch everything. Okay. But they must have some faith in it that I don't know that I don't have, and that's fine. <laughs> I thought your faith was restored. <laughs> Did you lose it's it? It's shaking again? again, okay? Yeah, just like the wash plant <laughs> shaking the spoils. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Like uh on it's a small world. Your favorite and little it's a small your world. favorite little uh doll and it's a small yeah, little shaker and one. it goes like whoa it goes like this shake, yeah shake 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 shake, shake, shake. yeah it's okay. like the hula one yeah yeah anyway back to <laughs> lot six back to lot six mm -hmm. so what did they find what do they do they find stuff metal stuff first a modern nail yep and that did not <laughs> excite <laughs> gary whatsoever no, he was not thrilled he almost seemed angry yeah <laughs> and then they found two old pins yeah you know when they pulled those up and they're holding them in their hands, like they have like a fat section in the middle, like that chisel thing they found a few yeah. weeks ago. It looked exactly like it to me, but they didn't, they didn't describe it as being like that other find. Why? Cause it looked like it had the bulbous mm -hmm. part in the middle, you know, the part where you'd hold your hand and like, I'm sure chisel it has with to the other do end. with corrosion. I'm sure the ends are going to corrode. Before yeah, your center is going to corrode out. Yeah, it just looked a lot like it to me. I mean, it's been in salt water. Okay. Uh, I'm just basic deductive well, last, reasoning, my dear Watson. Yeah. <laughs> last week, they were uh, talking about that those... Uh, what, what? The chisels? No. They, or the, the week prior to this episode had another thing where they... More um, pins? Well, they're, they had the thing that corroded a lot. Mm -hmm. remember and they took it to carmen leg the yeah. blacksmith and he's like yeah i'm surprised you know i wouldn't be surprised if there was a whole bunch of these at one point mm -hmm. and they all got corroded away completely because mm -hmm. this one's so corroded you've just answered your own question corrosion okay. corrosion ta-da ta-da okay yay <laughs> well you you seemed offended that there was a bulbous center and they it just looked a lot it. it looked a lot like that other thing they found and they i just for me i needed them to compare it to it and they didn't and i was like this looks exactly the same, okay guys. let's back up here back it up you need them to explain to you about dunfield yeah to make you happy uh-huh okay <laughs> and then you need them to compare things that you won't compare crib spike thank you jeff uh it's the crib spike that they found last time yeah didn't he call these ones crib spikes too Probably. Oh, well, maybe maybe it is all. This. Everything's just, a cribbing oh, spike oh, to Okay, so no, the crib the... spike was what they found that was the corroded thing. Sorry, I was thinking about the chisel, but yeah. Yeah, and that was not found in the water. No, it wasn't. So it wouldn't be corroded. Okay. Okay, so you need to carry be, on. They're gonna be I'm like, done. "Excuse me, Dustin. Dustin, I need to compare these for you." <laughs> yeah, they should. They need to make like a little web series on the side, you know, where they talk about things a little more in depth. 
titled <laughs> no no just <laughs> comparisons for dustin <laughs> sure okay that would make hey that would make me feel really special i would be i would be fine with that if you guys want to do that go for it you can even have your name in there too <laughs> nope you're the only one that needs comparisons <laughs> Okay, go for it. Go. <laughs> what am I going to? Let's talk more about lots the third six, fight. You know? Oh, sorry. Oh yeah, Gary's very convinced that it's another possible wharf location, and Jack mm. calls it this amazing find. My yeah. only problem is, what about the fact that all those lots, because there was no causeway before, you're you're gonna have to have a place to get to the island i'd assume there'd be many wharfs or places to tie up your ship if you own land there probably but they just seemed excited to find so many you know i guess three is so many uh artifacts maybe they found more and they just didn't have time to show it but they found so many artifacts in one spot i mean why would they be there in those kind of building materials you know we also found a bunch of nails when we were magnet fishing over at Vancouver Lake. We did. Maybe they were ancient nails. I mean, I th we saw a couple square heads. <laughs> yeah, see? But I'm old. pretty sure that was like just old trash. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Dartmouth Heritage Museum. Evergreen House. This field trip. is the field trip. Bill Trent. So we have Rick. Yes. We have Peter. Peter. Billy. Have, oh, I was going to save him for last. Oh. Doug. And then we had Billy. Billy. You were so excited to see Billy go on a field oh, trip. Oh, man. I was stoked because he's got a place at the table. He has a place in the car. He's the man. Yeah, he sure is. Billy's <laughs> the man. So when they can when they drive up to this museum, Yes. And you know, they're excited because what they're going to, they're going to, they're following up on a lead about the 90 foot stone. Correct. And you know, it, it hurts me a little bit. Like, you know, I, I've had so much warmth in and in my heart, you know, about some of the things they've been doing, but then like, I was so invested in that 90 foot stone from last season. Mm -hmm. And now it hurts my heart to know that it could not be like, it could be just a replica or it could be, just some random stone that's not the 90 foot stone. <laughs> like I was so invested in that being the 90 foot stone. Now I have a reason. Oh, do you? Yes. Let's hear it. <laughs> so I think maybe it was a replica of sure. it and it was put out just so that people could see that there and be crushed. But what they really did was hide the other one. Okay. Right. Sure. And that was later taken to the evergreen house mm -hmm. um but i i think it was if you leave it there and then someone thinks they have found the 90 foot stone there and they can't read anything they'll just stop looking for the next stone mm -hmm. right so what we know is that the evergreen house okay well the creighton house right? well it's called the ever it was called oh, the Evergreen okay. House when it was built by one of the prominent judges. Gotcha. In the area. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Kevin Rideout, which is the guy that gave this lead that we're following, that was given to Rick at Dan Blankenship's memorial service. Yep. And it's kind of like, oh, that's kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. And Kevin mentions that he had been on a tour or whatever at the place 40 some odd years ago it's a long time ago it is a long time ago and that the lady that was showing them around pointed through the window it to the stone mm -hmm. and he, he it was kind of like a little hill or whatever it was partially exposed and okay so he's like why why wasn't this ever dug up well, interesting fact is that in 1978, this, the Evergreen House, which was owned by Dr. Helen Creighton, mm -hmm. was sold to the city of Dartmouth. That's 41 years ago. Oh, okay. okay? Mm -hmm. So my question is, did was Kevin there when Helen Creighton, Dr. Helen Creighton, was showing 
the place. That's what it sounds like, right? That's what it sounds like to me. Because he said 40. Yeah, he said that she was the curator at the time. Or maybe it wasn't her, like it wasn't her. But like the curator at the time s- said that it was out there and that that person would have no reason to lie about that mm-hmm. information. Yes. But to me, I'm thinking, did, was he there when Helen still owned the property? Because it was sold 41 years ago. And that's kind of right within that time frame, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And for the curator that's there now saying it was there beforehand, they don't have any record of it. The, now, the, the current curator's name is Terry Island, yes. by the way. Yes. Island. 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 But E Y L A N D. Okay. No, no, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So she's going to sell it to the city of Dartmouth. Mm-hmm. Now, Dr. Helen Creighton was a folklorist. Mm. Okay. So she collected folklore and songs. She was known as Canada's first lady of folklore, mm. I didn't which know that. would explain her interest in the stone, especially mm. if she was related or cousins with the Creightons from the bookstore. Yeah, okay. Augustus Oliver Creighton. Mm-hmm. Yep. So former Oak Island treasure hunter. Mm-hmm. And the year that this house was sold to Helen was 1919. Mm-hmm. That's the year that the bookstore closed. So, so it would make sense. They're gonna have to move that stone for that stone, which would be really important to her if folklore is important and to keep it within the family. So she moves it there. Why it would have been partially buried, I don't know. Okay, but we well, seem to have all the other answers. Why don't you have that one? <laughs> slow your roll. I'm hypothesizing <laughs> okay, here. Well, sure. Okay, and it's out there. Maybe she figures if she does that, then someone that comes looking for it is naturally going to look in the house. It makes more sense to hide it in plain sight. Mm-hmm. Well, if I'm about to sell this property to the city of Dartmouth. My thought is, well, I'm not leaving the 90 foot stone here. Folklore is super important to me. And this is like the iconic original piece of folklore. Yeah. So you leave a fake 90 foot stone at the bindery. Mm -hmm. Okay. So nobody comes looking for the real one. You've got the real one that's hidden in plain sight. And then you're going to sell the house. So you remove said stone Mm. and move it with the family or whoever but you know what's really hard to do when you remove something of that size? Fill it in. Fill so in the it, hole. Yeah. You know what would be really easy to do? GPR? Plant something oh. where <laughs> you put it. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> Hence the giant rhododendron. Mm. And then it doesn't look suspicious versus this giant wow, hole Wow, you in just the thought it all out, haven't you? Wow. I'm a thinker. So my thought is 90 foot wow. stones, not still there, but it is somewhere within the Creighton estate. I would be following the Creighton estate. You know what? Boom. Goes the dynamite. Yeah, that, that's, that was worthy of that. That was good. Thank you. I like that. Thank you. Yeah. You like all my uh, brilliant thinking. Now I could be completely wrong, but that's my hypothesis. No, it's just, it's a fun idea. It's a, thought out as i speak idea yeah i mean you put a lot of uh you know that you you connected a lot of little pieces there that could you know a lot of could it be's a lot of could it be she wrote a lot of books yeah okay and i mean she's apparently really kind of like well, i don't want to say nova scotia famous I, mm. I i don't know as far as folklore goes Maybe she... didn't she discover the like the anthem of Mm. Uh, I don't know. You've done a lot more research on her than me, apparently. So <laughs> I have no idea. That's well, cool. that's my idea. I'm predicting they don't find the 90 foot stone. They're digging in the hole in which she had it before, uh, which is the rhododendron, which she left as a marker as to where it is. So where the roots of the rhododendron are, because they 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 also said, oh, that rhododendron is about 40 years old. Exactly. So. so if it was sold coming together about here. 41 years ago, you, I wouldn't leave it, yeah. especially if it's that big of a deal. Man, and for her to be a, a folklorist, that's a pretty big deal. You're a really good treasure hunter. Uh, yeah. Too bad I haven't found. Yeah, that's yet. that's worthy of a seat at the 
at the table, you know, I think I think they should bring you in. You should have you should have that this discussion with them at the uh, you know they've probably already table. had this discussion like themselves months ago, months like ago, months ago yeah. and they're probably tracking down the estate. I also think, let's say in theory that the replica ninety foot stone mm -hmm. that everybody's transcribed or not everybody, but the teacher says ninety feet, forty, 40 feet down, yeah, two million pounds of gold, yeah. I, I just keep looking at it, and to me, they look like alchemaic symbols. Mm -hmm. it's the symbol for gold is on there. The um, sun. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of I, them. I thought I saw the silver, silver, and then also one for water and air. Mm -hmm. And there was a couple other. I just started looking at this the other night. To me. If those are even the right symbols. What do you. Yeah, well, that's just it. Are are they the right symbols? We Nobody don't know. took a picture of the stone. Nobody transcribed it, you know, as far as we know. Because there's a lot of questions to as to whether the symbols that they think they know are even anything, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, th if there's questions, then there's questions, you know? It's not, there's nothing definitive. Well, what about, like, the, so the HO stone? Yeah. Okay. If I was looking at that, and the symbols that are on there, also look like alchemic symbols the, the o is not actually an o again it's a symbol for gold or for sun i mean we could be looking for something of gold what if all these random pieces they have found like throughout the island are just like broken up pieces of the original 90 foot stone okay the ho stone was really big yeah that's true and they but, blew it up yes boom <laughs> Not like that was like with dynamite. But if <laughs> if those symbols look like the ones that are copied down from mm. the ninety foot stone, was to say similar symbols when it had been on the ninety foot stone. Yeah, sure. That is literally secret recipes written in code. Yeah, our favorite clot worthy moment, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe all of Oak Island is truly a red glass oh. red glass making factory. Yeah, because it's the from from last season that where they were explaining how red glass was made. It was a secret recipe hidden in code, handed down generation to generation. Because mm -hmm. the recipes, you know, they get lost. Yeah, well, if someone may have found it on Oak Island. Mm -hmm. Just saying. Okay, or not, but okay, good, good theory. I'm that enough was fun. on my tangents. That was fun. No, that was really good. I enjoyed all that. So thank you. Thank you You're, for sharing. I'm here to educate you today, apparently. Yeah, that was Deidre's sharing hour. Deidre's you know? sharing. That was good. Show right. and tell. Yeah. So one thing, you know, so that's what you have to share. You know that's what, what you, I have. You to know share. what I have to share. What? You know what I thought was fun about this? It was when they first arrived. Uh -huh. Rick was like fingers crossed and toes crossed. Yeah. That's that's my contribution. <laughs> and when you said, and I want to make sure that was said. <laughs> I was like, it'd be really hard to walk with your toes crossed. Hey, you know what? His fingers crossed, his toes crossed, and maybe he was at the grounds where the ninety foot stone ended up at one point. Mm -hmm. I think we're chasing a stone here. I hope. I hope there's more leads, and I hope. I hope they can figure it out because, you know, they're real. Ex like Rick is. I think convinced that if they find that 90 foot stone, that's the one thing. It that could be the one thing. That's the one thing. The one thing is I don't know. The 90 foot stone for me is the biggest deal about Oak Island. Like mm -hmm. if it was real, if someone had really uh dug a pit at some point and put a layer of oak logs every 10 feet and then mm -hmm. at 90 feet or 80 feet, according to some sources, they find this basically a tablet with like engravings on it i mean if you can find that and put the world's best code crackers on it now i mean that would be because of the history amazing. channel what was it decoded or something they that just sounds a like a bunch, decoded yeah. yeah i bet you they can crack it that was a there. fun that was a fun show yeah it was a fun show yeah. i like that one yeah so i don't know like for real mm -hmm. um I mean, the 90 foot stone is to me the most important thing they can find rather than the X marks the spot, money pit, drill down, find the treasure. Mm -hmm. Like it is the thing that's that would that be the most important the thing to find thing. as far as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. It would be that's your... why I was so excited last year when they found the 90 foot stone. I thought that was like going to give them some real answers. It really it could be a decoy that's a 
diversion. Mm -hmm. Like, I really think it could be. And, you know, Terry goes on to mention when they're out there that the entire ridge where they were at would have been Creighton property before. So originally when the Evergreen House, which is the Dartmouth Heritage Museum now, was more acres, right? So they, the 90 foot stone it could have been on one of those they could have just moved it to a different piece of property if they still owned mm -hmm. either of those on either side of it in 70 wait what was it 70 whatever hmm. yeah, but quite, quite the trail quite the trail if that's if that is where the 90 foot stone ended up at one point mm -hmm. because it was in the ground they dug it up john smith and mm -hmm. and uh, dan mcginnis and anthony vaughn and it ended up in i think john smith's wall as part of his house in his foundation, right? It was like in his fireplace or something. Mm -hmm. and in then, theory. I mean, we don't theory. have proof of it. And then it ends up in some book bindery mm -hmm. and then possibly on this museum. As a way to pr promote it, right? Mm -hmm. And get people to invest in the in the Oak Island dig. Watch it it the 90 foot stones probably sitting in a municipal warehouse somewhere mm -hmm. and just like under something. And Nobody knows it's there. Nobody knows Nobody it's there. Nobody's seen it for, you know, 50, 60, 70 years. Yeah. It's a little bananas to think about. Mm -hmm. Got to gotta get all the pieces, all the puzzle pieces. Let's yeah. get them together. So it was fun to see Rick mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, Doug and Peter. Actually, it was mostly Rick and Peter that dove into the rhododendron bush to, like, look, in, look around. <laughs> oh, they were all over it. And then, like. You don't see Billy in there, but you know Billy was in there because he had twigs and stuff and leaves he on his he back. Had leaves you know? on his back. Billy was down there too. It was just that was a fun little Billy's adventure invested. for these guys. Yeah, they wanted they wanted to find that ninety foot stone. I mean, I guarantee you, if they found like a stone sticking out of the ground right there, Rick would have like started digging with his bare hands. Yes, but I think they would have even had to get permits for that for digging with your bare hand. I mean, he'd just been like, "Hey guys, turn off the cameras and just start," <laughs> you know. <laughs> Going like a gopher, you know? They were hoping they'd just find something sticking up. But really, so I think they all agreed they need to pursue an archaeological dig. Mm -hmm. Right? I don't think they'll find the stone. Maybe there'll be something else interesting out there. But because it's on museum property, got, got to do it right. Hey, you do have to do it right. And Rick will make sure it's done right. If there's anything, he's a by the books kind. You could tell he's a by the books kind. He of guy. is. I appreciate that. Yes, you do. You're a by the books kind of person. Yeah. Me, I'm just like, let's go dig. <laughs> I know. I know. Okay. Anything else we have from the no. Dartmouth Heritage? No, Museum? that kind of wraps up what the basically the whole episode. The episode actually ends back at the Smith's Cove digging, doing the digging. But we already talked about that at the top of the show. Mm -hmm. So next time on that was wait that was a fun What's episode time? though i just want to say Loved fun it. episode lots of interesting things you've opened my mind to a whole bunch a whole new possibility wow. about a lot of things so thank you so much uh wow you're so very welcome yeah well you did great so thank you <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> i'm so smart yeah now we can talk about next time on the curse of oak island <laughs> Okay, what do we got? So what I wrote down, because you know I took some notes, it says continuing yeah, we'll work in Smith's time. Cove at Mike's Box. That's what I ended up calling it, Mike's Box. I kind of like that. That sounds good. Yeah. It's like a sluice box, but a Mike's it's box. It's Mike's Box, okay. I wonder if they have anybody on the team named Sluice. They don't. <laughs> we would have heard it by now. The t the teammate <laughs> is like in okay, I was gonna say buried in the ground over by Shaft 9, but that's not <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. All right. So I wrote, Terry's excited to see timber in the rocks. See Paul, what? Timber. That's and, not what I thought you said. And Paul, Paul, <laughs> what, what was buried in the rocks? Terry. Tim Burton. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. Okay. You, you thought I said Tim Burton buried in the rocks? No. He's a creepy dude, though. He'd probably be into that. You don't know him. He just has an imagination. Okay. Have you seen his movies? Okay. Yeah, that's why uh. I said he's got an imagination. Okay. You don't know if he's creepy or not. Okay. And then I said, Paul says they don't have any structures like this on any of their maps. Yes. And Paul points out something made of wood. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
And then they have a, a scene in the war room mm-hmm. where Theris w- appeared, and uh, it looks like his name was Corjan Mole. C O R J A N M O L. You got more out of that than I did. So. Well, I was watching with subtitles on, and it put his name be- at before he spoke, and so I I wrote it down. Okay. okay. And it said uh, he said this painting was an instrument to record a secret about Oak Island. He continues. I would dig where the shepherd points and they had like a graphic on the screen that spelled out G I T E N E O Arcadia. He was talking about me. Yeah. Where the shepherd points. Oh, Deidre's made a name as shepherd. <laughs> so wherever I point, you should go. What? So now he said, if you should dig where the shepherd I don't points. even know who this theorist is. Why would I just <laughs> randomly listen to him about something that he's instructing because me he's, to do about with increased well, he made it on the show? No. So now I'm just going to go places and point and say, dig where the shepherd said. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I can't help myself. I'll do that as far as the secret's concerned because I trust your judgment. Seriously? Yeah. Because you argue with me about it. I trust your judgment, though. You okay. have good reasons behind things that you figure I out. I do. I do have good reasons. All right. And then the last piece from next time on Oak Island that I had typed down more work on the sonic drill near the money pit found more wood. Jack exclaimed that they are 14 feet away. Marty says they are zeroing in. And Doug says the money pit may no longer be lost. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. I think that's the real mic drop right there. Yeah. That's exciting stuff. Huh? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, wait. I mean, and then we have to wait till next year, <sighs> next decade. 2020 mm-hmm. here we go i i'm stoked about it well I, yeah. except for that i have to wait i'm i am really stoked about it too it's i mean this has been a fun season so far mm-hmm. and we're not i think we're barely a third the way through it like mm-hmm. not even a third through it there's said to be like 30 episodes this year mm-hmm. and we're on episode eight i mean there's a lot coming guys this is gonna be a oh, jam-packed yeah. season I feel like there's something great each episode that I can just yeah hold on grab to grab on to like a bulldog or something that hangs like on a to bulldog. things. Yeah. I don't know. Bulldogs are cute though. They are cute. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have to admit, they kind of do a lot of snorting and stuff, right? They need a CPAP machine. <laughs> <laughs> a little bulldog CPAP machine, yeah. <laughs> All right. So that was the end of the episode. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking forward to the next one. I can't wait. Well, me too. Know what else? What else do we have? Because we have more, right? It's clot worthy time. Yeah, it's always the voice of the island has spoken Mm -hmm. and is up for us and our fellow listeners to determine the most amazing clot worthy moment of the episode. Yes, thank you, Robert Clotworthy. Yes, Mr. Narrator. If you don't know who Robert Clotworthy is, he is our narrator. Some people call him annoying. I say lean in. I yeah. like it. He is F U N. <laughs> He's F U N. Huh? Fun. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you got the N at the end of that because that was going somewhere bad for no, me. No, it wasn't. He is a fun. He, the way he talks and the way that he exclaims things through questions is just epic. Well, if he was gone, it would not be the same show. No. And I'm sorry, I would not enjoy it as much. And I'm going to have some hey, people throwing some hate no. mail at me for that. No, you're not. Hey, we all like like Matty Blake, but uh-huh. we we heard his his like narration of some of his episodes. Sorry, bud. You're good at a lot of stuff, but you're fine at the narration too, but Robert Clotworthy is just a little bit better. Well, he just He's become after ses- se- season seasons, mm. you know, it feels like part of it. He feels like I don't know. He's part of the island. He, <laughs> he is, and he's never been to the island. He's never been to the island. So uh, we've 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 uh, messaged uh, Robert Clotworthy on Twitter a couple times because I think he's a fan of the Clotworthy moment. Oh, segment. he's got to be. So um, he said that because uh, we were talking about History Con and how no one yes. from the Curse of Oak Island is going to be at History Con for whatever reason. Yes. <sighs> like I don't get it. We don't understand, but. Uh, you know, it's only your number one rated show. I mean, <laughs> right. you should probably have some representation of Oak Island there. Anyway, he's uh, I think he's going to be there, but he's like part of Ancient Aliens or whatever. He also 
I think he lives in the area, yeah. doesn't he? Yeah. And so, but he was saying like, he would like to meet the guys. He would love for them to come to history con so that he can meet them. And we're like, you've never met the guys. Yeah. So that's a tragedy. Uh, yeah. They need to be flying him out stat. Yeah. I mean, for maybe for a digging deeper or a something. Robert Clotworthy field trip to Oak Island it needs to happen. We could come too. It'd be fun. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. So, caught worthy moments. What won last week? Are you ready? Yeah, let's hear it. That's the winner. A scupper for shipbuilding? Could this iron spike be connected to the wooden scuppers discovered in the swamp nearly five decades ago by veteran Oak Island treasure hunter Fred Nolan? Mm, a oh a scupper yo yeah that's a good one that that's was fun. a good one i like i like the the whole package there and it's not just the a scupper and then that was it i'm glad you had all the rest of it there too i know because you always complain if i don't make them longer blah yep. blah blah the world that was awesome to Justin. that was a good one thank you <laughs> you're welcome good job robert Cotworthy. good job everybody that voted for a scupper <laughs> be the voted for a scupper all right you got two new ones this week all right, let's hear them. I, I'm excited because I thought there were some good ones. Like, I hope you picked the ones that I liked. You know, there was very minimal clot-worthy moments. There was, but the ones that were there were good. Yes, um, I think there was three, and I'm picking two. Okay. I hope they're ones you like. Okay, let's hear them. Square-shaped pins dating back to the 1700s and possibly from a ship? That was fun, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Did you notice the square-shaped pins? That they had that bulbous thing. And, mm -hmm. you know, why, why would they have that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, I had to pick on you. Thanks. Okay. That was fun. Stacked rocks found alongside the mysterious log structure and in an area where no previously documented search has taken place. That's good stuff. I literally LOL'd yeah. when that one came on. He's said stacked rocks and i just laughed out loud <laughs> yeah well that's good uh you know you actually you, you laughed out loud also you literally lol'd when i sent you a text message last week when i was near the border of mexico uh -huh. and my friend and i went to the international house of pancakes right before <laughs> we went international because i had never been out of the country until last week and yeah. I, I went to mexico uh-huh um on a rescue mission yes. anyway they uh like my friend and i stopped at ihop because we're like if we're going international we're going international international house of pancakes yeah. anyway clot worthy moments those were awesome Love examples it. and those were fun and there is a way that you the viewer the listener can vote, vote and vote for which one is your favorite and next week we'll reveal the winner of the vote we will reveal yeah. the results they can vote on Facebook. Yep. At Oak Island Podcast. They can also vote on Twitter. Yep. And that is at Oak Island Pod. Yes. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. What else do we have? I think we've got a couple reviews. We do have reviews. We have a Facebook review and we have a. Uh oh. And we, okay. So we have a Facebook review and we have a Apple Podcast review to share with you guys today. Okay, so the first one is short and sweet from Facebook. It says, I love this a lot. Uh, keep us informed of the show, guys. And that was from Barb Finer. Yeah. So thank you, Barb. Oh, we have a little princess. We have a uh, hey, are you looking for something? Our daughter just uh, barged in our studio yeah. to uh, look for something. Okay, and she's gone. Oh, she's not gone. There she is. <laughs> anyway, that was our first review. So thank you so much, Barb. That was awesome. And then we have another we have another review that's from Apple Podcast. And it says, For the love of Oak Island, I look forward to your podcast every Friday morning for my commute to work. I love your play by play on current weeks on the current week's show, and your banter back and forth keeps the show moving along at a good pace. Your love and affection for each other shines through just like it does between Marty and Rick and the Aww. rest of the fellowship on the show. Uh, that was one of the first things that drew me to the Curse of Oak Island. It was re so refreshing to see a family actually love and like each other and show it. By the way, I miss hearing your boots on arm. Uh, sorry. I miss hearing your boots and armchairs podcast. Are you planning on doing many more soon? 
Thanks and keep up the good work. A really amateur treasure hunter in training. And that was from Abby one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one via Apple podcast. So Abby, you're awesome. Thank you so much. Hey, what, is, what are those things called? What, when the they're forward and forward? and forward, backwards and forward, uh-huh. like, like the word Bob. Yeah. What? I really don't know, but I know That's the weird clever. owl has a cool like song it. that has only things that go like that backwards and forwards. That's clever. Yeah. She must so, be a treasure hunter. Oh, yeah. I bet so. So that's uh, those are the reviews. So thank you so much, Abby. Yes. Thank you so much, Barb. That means a lot to us. Yeah. I mean, like, those are those those are special. That's good stuff. We have a lot of uh, new listeners. So it's nice that you're able to convey uh, kind of what you feel from us through these words. And hopefully other people get that, too. So thank yeah, you. Absolutely. Um if you haven't noticed, we're doing something a little bit different today. Yeah, we are doing it live. Live, which is why you saw our child burst in over yeah, yeah. here a while ago mm-hmm. and then leave. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. But Emma, that's Emma, okay. Emma's never been shy of the camera. So no, no, fine. she's not. So. Um, but what we will also do is have this up on the regular feed. Yep. Which means you please still go ahead, download it on Stitcher or Castbox is what I use, iTunes, all all your podcast players. You'll still be able to get it there, but we thought it would be fun to do something a little bit different and yeah. are interested on if you guys like it. Yeah. So let us know what you think about this new kind of format. Mm-hmm. It's just a test run and we thought it'd be fun to do. So I think we've accomplished that. And I think uh, I bet people are enjoying this right now. So thank Hopefully. you for everybody that tuned in live. If you, um, you know, if next time you don't catch us live, no big deal. Like we said, you could always just download the podcast like normal, right? Always. Yeah. So uh, before we go, I just want to say, if you want, there's still time to get set one of the Curse of Oak Island, or could it be an Oak Island podcast trading cards? Yes. And you go to Oak Island, or, sorry, patreon.com slash Oak Island podcast and get them. I'm going to be putting some a set uh, on eBay soon. And if it goes for $50, it goes for $50. If it goes for a dollar, it goes for a dollar. But you can get it right now for five bucks on uh, patreon.com slash Oak Island podcast. So I mean, best mm-hmm. way to do it, and you get some awesome cards, awesome mm-hmm. backstories on the back. So uh, yeah, get check those it out. through the end of the month. So there's a couple more days to a sign more up. More days to get that first set. Then and we're gonna get set two coming up real soon. Yep, uh, the January set will be up, and those of you that are signed up on Patreon, you'll get your decks in the mail. Yep, here soon. Yep, real quick. So is that it? Do we have anything else? So so. We need to say email us at mm-hmm. if you have any questions at Oak Island Podcast at gmail.com. Yes, you can find us on Instagram at Oak Island Podcast. You already know you can find us on Facebook right here on Oak Island Podcast, Twitter at Oak Island Pod, and and we just want to say thank you to some of our patrons that do get these tra- uh, trading cards every month. We get we have Darlene Hanley, Amy Crow Schultz, and Ann Posta. So thank you guys. Thank you. Appreciate that. Like I cannot explain how much that means to us. Your support is. Hmm, it means it everything. It really warms our heart. Yeah. Like, you guys are awesome. We just love our listeners. Um, we do have, you know, I don't know how to find it right now, but we do have some voicemails and uh, maybe we'll do, we'll, we'll get to those on our next live stream. We do a live stream every Tuesday, mm-hmm. an hour before the Curse of Oak Island starts. And it's just like a pregame where we get to chat about what we think is coming in the next episode and just have a good time with our uh, our fellow Oak Island enthusiasts. Yeah, like we answer questions from the chat during that. Um, and it's a lot of fun. So that's it. All right. Do we have anything else? Is that all? I think that's it. All right. Well, that's awesome. I hope you guys have a wonderful, happy new year. And maybe we'll be back with a special episode again next week. All right. Well, until next time. Could it be? That's a bum pal. Then that looks sweet. <laughs>